Good morning. Welcome. We welcome in Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. And uh, Pat, Capital Beat uh, OK did a report on superintendent salaries. And obviously, this has been a fairly controversial subject. Um, there's been a lot of talk about consolidating the districts, and part of that is because of the, the salaries that are paid to these superintendents. You found some astounding numbers. Uh, share a little bit of that with us, and then also, do you think that, that your report could cause uh, administrative pay um, to change? Uh, do you think this is going to change? Uh, it's hard to say. I have to give credit uh, to State Representative David Dank, who asked the questions that it gleaned this data. And he, Representative Dank gets a little better at this every year. Yeah. In another life, he could be a journalist. Uh, Dank uh, got data from the State Department of Education and he circulated it to the press and it was the right time of the week you know for me to get right on it so here's uh, a quick sketch even before you get to astonishing numbers per student uh, there's some quick uh, overview things that are kind of interesting here in the city metro area Gloria Griffin uh, the superintendent at Millwood um, is drawing down a total of 170,000 one hundred and forty nine dollars a year <clears throat> but what's interesting is for the number of students in the Millwood district she's making hundred and fifty five dollars and sixty seven cents per student all right now at the other end of the spectrum there's twenty two top paid superintendents in the state that I looked at at the other end of the spectrum on a per student basis the guy's still making a good living yeah. is Dr. Carl Springer with the Oklahoma City District hundred and seventy four thousand one hundred and fourteen dollars four dollars and five cents per student now those that kind of disparity leaps out at you just in terms of how many people are being administered it's a, it's a professional efficiency thing to look at the differentials this is not to pick on any one individual these are merely descriptive terms now with all that in mind there are 22 public school superintendents in the state of oklahoma who make more than the governor who is paid hundred and forty seven thousand dollars a year 22 public school superintendents in Oklahoma at the local level being paid more than the governor of the state. Now quickly, uh, some other information, and uh, some of this, everything old is new again because there has been reporting in the past done on uh, superintendent costs, administrative costs, there's going to be more. Uh, I'm not a one-man band on this. Mm -hmm. This is just recent information up through April 14th. But very quickly, in the Kildare District, um, Which superintendent, is North Central. Yeah, North Central Ponca City, north of Ponca City, I yeah, think. Yeah. Close to Kansas, right. actually. Uh, Kildare District, Superintendent Anthony Ledwig, $65,700 a year. And when I say pay, we're talking about total compensation. Yeah. So there might be a pay scale that's lower than that, and then they have cars or, you right. know, uh, things that are counted in their compensation. Um, his compensation amounts to... <clears throat> one thousand one hundred and ninety four dollars and fifty five cents per student in the Kildare district in the Plainview district out north of Woodward almost to the Pandale, if I remember uh, Ron Murphy this this fella has been in the news before I'm sure he works very hard and he probably should work pretty hard he gets three thousand four hundred and fifty nine dollars and sixty five cents per student seventeen students in a school district system He's paid a total of $58,814 a year. Now, whether the total compensation for supers in Oklahoma is $56 million or $54 million, it's a lot of money, and it's, you know, a cycle like this is the time uh, to look at these kinds of figures because, uh, all told, you have 202 public school superintendents in Oklahoma paid more than $100,000 a year in salary. And, of course, they're accruing benefits uh, towards uh, retirement in the pension fund as well. Well, so. we know David Dank has been trying to move this issue forward. Uh, his wife, when she was in the legislature prior, also had an interest in this, and yet uh, they've run into so much opposition. It'll be interesting to see if they can make it. Yeah, move. and a quick, quick uh, thought on that is that all that either Dank has ever proposed is um, administrative consolidation. Right to use the ugly C word, whatever you want, to, efficiency, mm -hmm. to combine some smaller districts, especially ones that are contiguous. You get into situations like in uh, eastern Oklahoma, still well alone, seven public school districts. It just seems, it, it seems uh, shockingly um, inefficient. Um, and it's something that's going to have to be addressed 
in a time where there's still time to address it or it'll have to be addressed some years in the future in a crisis mode. And no one would want that. No. All right. Um, real quick, let's touch on... Uh, Real quickly, let's touch on the budget. I oh, mean, yeah, real just quickly. Just a big, big issue that's sitting out there. And just, you know, we're less than a month from the end of session, regular session anyway, and still no budget at this point. Yeah, and uh, uh, Senator Myers, who uh, works real hard and is very dutiful, the, uh, David Myers in the Senate, who's the Appropriations and Budget Chairman, has been sick for several days. He was getting back here just at the end of the week. We might even have something, you know, by Saturday uh, uh, or Sunday, today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Uh, having said that, he and Earl Sears, who's the chairman in the House, literally tell a little story out of school. I, Sears, I was the last one to leave the newsroom the other night uh, at the Capitol, which is not always the case. Yeah. It's usually uh, Mike McNutt from oh, <laughs> the Oklahoman. Yeah. Uh, but I, I walked out and there was Sears and we chatted just briefly. He said they really are getting close and that he expected something maybe even right around now or early in the new week. We'll see. The clock is ticking. The broad outline is there, but I still don't have a feel, and nobody's talking out of school on the 3% versus 5% right. on the protected agencies, the difference between the governor um, and the legislative leaders versus the 5 to 7% for all other agencies. And those numbers may actually be low unless there's something I'm not aware of because of the delays we've discussed before in implementation, uh, implementation of some of the administrative cost savings mm -hmm. in state government as a result of not being able to get the uh, emergency clauses enacted. So the report on the budget, which really wasn't that short, I have to admit, yeah. well, uh, is we're going to know something by the time we next talk. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be a mid-May adjournment. We may still be looking at the end of the month before they can get this all done just because of human factors and because right. of the difficulty. All right. Well, we know you'll be watching, so will we. Thank you very much, Pat. You can read more about these and other topics at capitalbeatok.com. We'll see you next week.